As a member of the House Financial Services Committee in 2009, Congressman William Lacey Clay Jr. helped to bypass an Obama administration proposal requiring that the financial services industry have the best interests of their clients in mind. Now, that decision is coming back to haunt him in a race against challenger Cori Bush, who you've seen here on this show. Fight Corporate Monopolies, a progressive advocacy group, released an ad this week blasting Clay for the campaign cash he received from Wall Street donors. Take a listen. When predatory Wall Street firms needed a favor, they turned to Congressman William Lacey Clay. Clay opposed President Obama's effort to protect working families' retirement savings from greedy financiers, instead joining with Wall Street. What did Clay get for opposing Obama and siding with Trump? Tens of thousands of dollars in campaign contributions. Corporate power is corrupting democracy, and William Lacey Clay is part of the problem. Fight corporate monopolies are responsible for the content of this ad. Wow. All right, here to tell us more is DC Bureau Chief of The Intercept and great friend of the show, Ryan Grimm. Great to see you, Ryan. Good to see you, Ryan. See you. All right, give us the, the substance of what this ad is about and also give us a little bird's eye view of the strategy here. Right, the, you know, it's, it's, it's brutal in the sense that it, it pins Lacey Clay, you know, a, against Barack Obama. Barack Obama, you know, this, the second most popular Democrat in, in the world a, after his wife. And, you know, so being on the other side of him, and being allied with President Donald Trump in a Democratic primary is is just brutal. And what makes it even more brutal is that it, it's true in this case. So the the rule that that they're talking about there is called either the fiduciary rule or the conflict of interest rule. And it's utterly bizarre that it even had to be uh, enacted. The rule says that if you're a financial advisor, you have to have the best interests of your client at heart. In other words, you can't push your client into some crappy product that your own company made that's just gonna bilk them for fees. That's what much of the investment industry does for workers who don't have the power to choose between, uh, you know, between different investment plans. The employer picks the plan for them. Uh, the, the investment advisors give a little kickback to the employer, say this is the best one for you to take. You know, you're gonna get a great rate and it's, and it's the workers uh, who wind up with the short end of the stick. And so the Obama administration as part of Wall Street re reform was you know, put in, in, into place a rule that said you can't have these conflicts of interest. That unleashed a six year war uh, where the investment industry pushed back. And one of the people who was a, a, a leading uh, spear in that fight was Lacey Clay, who has a key position on the House Financial Services Committee and joined with Republicans in pushing back against this rule. And, and to have somebody like Clay on letters and, and in efforts pushing back against the rule, you know, gave it a sheen of, of bipartisanship. Say, you know what, actually, we're just we're just looking out for working people here. You know, otherwise, you know, you wouldn't have Democrats on the bill. Now, after Trump took office, he came in and said, hey, these Democrats were right. And he obliterated the rule. So the, the rule is now gone. Lacey Clay has has now switched sides and said that that's terrible what what Trump did. But but he spent you know six years fighting the Obama administration's attempt to enact mm -hmm. the rule. And it was, it was the fact that it took so long that enabled the Trump administration to o overturn the rule. Mm -hmm. And Ryan, I mean, outline this here, which is and we talked about this previously, which is that this is a real shot across the bow at the House Democratic Caucus. These are ads with real money behind them that are calling them out for corporatism over decades. What is this right. reverber? How is this reverberating on the national Democratic level? You know, it, it's going to shock the House Democratic Caucus because the, the ecosystem, as people understood it, was that you could do things like this in Washington and it wasn't going to turn up as news back in Springfield, Massachusetts right. or St. Louis, Missouri. You know, all, you know, all he did, hey, I, he signed a couple of letters that were written to the uh, Department of Labor, uh, you know, which kind of lends credibility to the effort. But it, it wasn't like he was going to public war and going on cable and attacking President Obama. And so the kind of unwritten rule was that sort of thing stays in, stays in Washington. But now you have this deep pocketed kind of dark money progressive group that's that's uh, fighting corporate monopolies. They, they're dumping six figures into St. Louis to, to tell everybody what he did when he was in Washington, you know, breaking that unwritten rule. This is the same group that that's doing the same thing in Springfield, Massachusetts, to, to Richie Neal, the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. Richie, Richie Neal 
took a ton of money from private equity firms that own uh, shares in hospital companies uh, and in, in kind of in hospital networks and fought against surprise surprise billing reform. You know, that, that thing where you show up in a, in a hospital and one of the doctors that sees you while you're in the hospital is not in your network and boom, you've got a $25,000 bill when you didn't have, it's not like you had a choice. You couldn't, mm-hmm. you couldn't ask the doctor as he's, as he's coming in with a clipboard, you know, what network he's in and, and, if, and if he's out of network. Uh, so, you know, he raked in tons of money and he's getting hammered back home with with big money. You know, this changes the game. You know, somebody like uh, Cori Bush, she lost by 20 points in, in 2018. She's running a much stronger campaign. You know, Clay is obviously still the favorite. Any incumbent it is a favorite. The Clay family has held this seat for 52 years. But to have, uh, you know, air power like this coming in has to make Clay nervous. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and that's a big part of the dynamic is not just was there an unwritten rule that you could do this stuff in D.C. and it, it wouldn't catch wind back home. The reason that that rule was there is because there were no money behind any anti-corporate forces to tell that story back home. So speak to that dynamic of how the fact that there's real money here to push for an you know, anti-monopoly, anti-corporate, or um, you know, as sort of what most Americans would actually want, a more balanced economy. Right. Talk about how that changes the, the dynamic as well. Yeah, I, th- I think there are two things going on here. And, and, and one of them is that the left has actually seen some success. So people who have money say, oh, actually, if I invest in candidates like an Ocasio-Cortez, uh, they might actually win. Uh, the second piece of what's going on, I think, is actually a function of inequality. You know, we have this lottery like capitalist system that has been operating 30 or 40 years now since the 1980s. And because it's a lottery system, you know, based on based on luck, uh, you're going to accidentally enrich a small percentage of decent people you know, who have kind of progressive <laughs> or populist values. All of a sudden they turn out to be you know, multimillionaires. And you know, they don't want anything other than you know, up, upsetting the apple cart. They they want to they want to destroy the system that kind of turned them into these multimillionaires. That you know that's not 99% of the people that the system works for. But if you have one one percent of those, and there and there are 2,000 of them, let's say across the country, you know that starts to add up to real money. If all you need is you know $300,000 in Springfield to to overturn uh, to overturn a, a a Ways and Means chairman, for instance. Mm-hmm. So tell us about the just the state of the race here, Ryan. How are Cory Bush's chances looking? What does the polling look like, and is this going to make a difference? So there, there, there was polling that I've heard of that was done by Demand for Progress that had Lacey Clay under 50%, which, which means he's vulnerable, uh, still had Bush trailing by double digits. The difference between this time and, and 2018 is that in 2018, the entirety of Bush's paid oper- paid campaign operation paid messaging operation was basically two weeks of radio ads this time she's going to be on radio for about eight weeks uh she's up on television with her own ad buy on top of the one that we're seeing here a sunrise movement just endorsed her and is going to raise money for her and their outside spending arm uh, might spend on her behalf she's been able to spend eighty five thousand dollars on on mailers so far and so Losing by 20 points in, in 2018 show, you know, shows that she's an, an underdog, but many of the people that came out to vote in 2018 simply didn't know who she is. And that it's an, it's an underrated fact of American politics that just simple name ID plays such a significant role. Pundits on the national stage say, well, uh, clearly voters you know, rejected Medicare for all, and, and therefore that's why uh, Cori Bush lost. If you talk to voters, they'd say, well, actually, I supported all of the things that Bush was uh, for, I just hadn't heard. I just hadn't actually heard of her. And under pressure, you know, Lacey Clay now is actually a sponsor of, of Medicare for All, which is another thing that has muddied the waters of, of these primaries. Because if you just kind of check a lot of boxes in these deep blue seats, the the incumbents, you know, have have usually sponsored all of the right bills and 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 appear outwardly progressive. So you kind of need a significant amount of money to start explaining to people, okay, yes, that's true, but here's what he did on the conflict of interest rule. That's a smart point. 